Witch is the third film in the Blair Witch franchise, which began in 1999's The Blair Witch Project. Now, a little backstory. There was quite a big deal when the first Blair Witch Project came out. It was a film that enlightened more mainstream into, to a lot of folks who weren't familiar with the found footage genre. We had earlier examples with films such as Cannibal Holocaust, which pretty much used the whole idea of basically raw footage of people being killed and stuff. Now, The Blair Witch Project was a film that a lot of people were kind of really into. The marketing behind was just insane. This was a film that when it came out, it was led to believe that this movie was real. Because I, for one, when I was little, I used to watch it all the time. And when I was little, I always thought the movie actually was real. And, and lo and behold, like... Over the years, I've come to grow on it ever since because it was not only one of the first found footage films, but it also sparked the way of being lost in the woods and being having that very like isolated feel where anywhere you go in the woods, something can happen. And while the film, while the Blair Witch Project didn't really have much of a budget because it was very shot cheap under a little over fifteen thousand dollars, the movie did blend its way of on a technical standpoint. It made its it made its stand of trying to make things a lot scarier by not showing you what you don't see. And I thought that really worked for it because growing up, this The Blair Witch Project is one of my favorite films. And I've got the DVD right here that you can see. And I, for a long time, always told everyone, like, I mean, I, have, I know a lot of friends that hate this movie, but I've come to grow on it, like, ever since I was young. And... And of course, lo and behold, when the film did successful at the box office, it was a huge hit. And then, a year later, Artisan, the company that did this, decided to do a sequel called Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2, which I do not own because that film is one of the worst sequels I have ever seen in my life. That is a film that, on paper, it sounds interesting because the concept is, in the sequel, it was you have this film being referenced in real life. So the whole idea they're playing on is kind of fascinating because you can do so many opportunities like how they did with Wes Craven's New Nightmare where you bring the horror into our world and do like a meta approach. And while I do like that concept, the first after the first like 20 minutes or so, that film went so, into so many grounds of being so awful and it had one of the worst endings I've ever seen in my life. And yes, I understand that that film did suffer through a lot of studio interference because they had to do a lot of reshoots and everything. But even still, watching it to this day, I can't put myself to to really own it next to this movie. Because if I was really a kind of a hardcore collector, I might. But I'd stand out that this film is really... This film deserves a better sequel. Now, this year really surprised me. Because earlier this year, we had a poster that was also shown at Comic-Con, and we got a trailer that also revealed a title called The Woods. It got me curious. I was watching, I was kind of like, you know what? I might give this a try, because they play like this on the trailer. It shows like this uh, cover song of Every Breath You Take by the Police. And so the trailer really got me interested in what the movie was going to be about. And then a couple months ago, we got a new trailer that revealed the, the actual title, which really threw me off. I was like, no, it can't be. And the trailer revealed it was actually Blair Witch, which means it's, an, it's now the third film and the actual true sequel that we've been waiting for for so many years. And I gotta tell you right now, like, this movie really surprised me. Now, I know this is gonna be pretty topical for a lot of ones that are familiar with the movie, and you can also make a lot of comparisons to this. But I'll tell you right now, like, this is a quite a step up from what we've had from that last piece of shit from Book of Shadows. And for everyone that likes Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, that's fine. You know, more I respect your opinion and all, but to me, Blair Witch is the sequel that I wanted to see from Book of Shadows. Where it's the same setting, because basically what it sets up is you have a character named James, who's actually the younger brother of Heather from the first film. And he discovers that this footage was uploaded in 2014 from a local in town of Burkittsville. And him and his friend Lisa decide to go and with her other group of friends decide to go check out the forest themselves and see what happened after all these years. And as the film progresses, you start to see that they, while they're exploring the forest, they also come up with the idea that in order to, that basically to help them try to explore more of the forest, they use a 
a drone, an aerial drone that, that they're able to see above the air. Now, I gotta admit, like, this movie did surprise me, and I'll get to what I liked about it. First, I liked the performances. I thought they were fine, especially the guy that plays James. I thought he was really, you know, was I thought he was very, very stern, and, you know, he, you could really follow along with the guy with his journey on trying to find his sister, and I, I thought that he was very likable, and I really understood a lot of what he was going through. And I also like the, uh, the, the her, his uh, girlfriend, I believe it's his girlfriend. I liked her too in the film. And I also liked the other guy, uh, Lane. This guy, I don't know, if, I, I, I might be kind of crazy saying this, but he looks kind of like a young Kim Coates or something, because he's got like this face and the kind of curly hair that kind of reminds me of like a young Kim Coates. In fact, he kind of acts kind of like him in some parts, because, you know, uh, not going to spoil anything, but there's something that happens later in the film that uh, really makes you wonder, like, if he was younger, Kim Coates would probably play this kind of role. And what I also enjoyed, too, was I love the how they this film actually expands upon the mythology of Blair Witch that we also, we that were mentioned from the first film that I like. Now, I won't go into detail, but there is a lot more things that happen in this film than what you see previously in the first film. Uh, there's a lot of things that they cover that were from the first film, but they actually go into a little bit more in depth with how where the woods came and how uh, where the witches were, where the witch came from, and things like that. And so that really got me. That I thought that was very interesting how they did that. What I also enjoyed too was the the whole aerial drone. I thought was very clever and how the drone is able to go up about I believe 100 meters and it's able to pinpoint its location but and this is the this is just a minor thing but I'm not going to spoil too much this drone pretty much makes it to where the, it, they're so deep in the forest like they're, they're really they don't they're looking through so many options on trying to get out and it it got me really invested in what was happening and what I also enjoyed from director Adam Wingard's like production value, I thought that the authentic look they have for the woods is phenomenal. This made me feel like I was watching the first film of Blair Witch Project again, where you're lost in the woods, when you run out of uh, service for your phone or GPS, it's easy to get lost in this kind of area. And I love the shots they set up with the trees and the way that they're, they're using the flashlights, because this time the characters are using uh, camcorders or they're like uh, head cams that they put on their side of their head so it makes it more easier for them to see when they're walking around and stuff or it's more easier for them to film when they're walking around and stuff so I did enjoy that and here's my biggest praise is that this film has three parts that really got my attention and or really got me very scared in a lot of part in these three parts now a lot of the actual tension does take a while to build up but once it goes down it really gets intense and I can say that there are quite some genuine scares in this film that really got to me and I can even and I don't mean to say this but some of the parts of the film that actually kind of scare me more than this movie did and that's not a compl that's not a that's not a fault against this movie I'm just saying that the, the new film had me in parts that I wanted to see like in this one so that really got to me now there are some flaws, though, I will say. The film does way too many uh, fake jump scares. There are a lot of points in this film where you have a character come up to someone else and they just randomly tap on the shoulder or do something stupid that ruins the tension for me. So there were quite a few times where I was looking at it and I was like, uh, do we really have to do this? Because I, I get really tired of seeing fake jump scares in a lot of films, and they do that a lot. They do that quite a bit in this one. Now, it does get better later during the film, but for the first about 30, maybe 40 minutes, they do kind of do that, where it's it's obvious it's, you know what's coming. And another problem I had, too, is there's two characters that I won't go into detail for, but they did kind of annoy me in some parts. They were very over. They were overacting, especially this one girl who just starts screaming all the time, and... Like, the way that she's screaming, just, she just annoyed the piss out of me. And another character who uh, is complaining the whole time of doing all these things, uh, of doing everything, but yet he still joins the group anyway. And that, that bothered me a lot. And thankfully, though, this character is not really in it that much, but it still annoyed me for the parts that he was, that, that, for the parts that did happen with him. 
And another problem I had too was, although the film is better than the second film, it is pretty much the same movie as this. You know, it's more or less a retrend of the first Blair Witch Project. And while I can kind of have a soft spot for certain movies that use similar plots, like Force Awakens, I can, this one I did have a big problem with because this is basically the same film. Like, they add some twist, twists that are pretty interesting, but you're pretty much getting the exact same formula like the first film did, and it's more or less like a remake. I mean, literally, it, it's basically the same film. So that did bother me a, a big part, but but for what they did as far as, you know, getting, getting uh, from where the story was going and how they were actually trying to tie some things up and actually having those really good... Uh, great genuine scares that did get to me a lot so I do say that the film is worth checking out at least for a matinee but I think you're probably going to get a better experience for these kind of films as far as found footage when you're at home and listening to it on surround sound or something so I do recommend the movie and that with that being said I will give 7.5 out of 10 it has its flaws don't get me wrong but it's still an enjoyable experience and for me and I really do hope that someday we can get more of these films or if they ever do something like Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, they could do it better the next time. I've been burnt out so many times with found footage, but every once in a while, with movies like the new one, like like the sequel to this, really got to actually surprised me, and I do recommend seeing it. So, what did you guys think of Blair Witch? Comment below, and if you guys like what you see here, you can check me out on my channel, and I'll be having more reviews coming up here soon. I'll see you guys later.